Hi everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. So I have taken all of your suggestions under advisement and I am still figuring some things out. Having said that, I am actually going to be jumping in on the middle of something and it's simply because I am watching Celebrity Big Brother and I need someone to talk to about it. That's where you guys come in. I have missed a boatload of episodes already and the thing's only been on for a week, maybe a week and a half. And I th think there's already been like eight episodes. The whole thing in its entirety is only going to be two weeks or three weeks or something like that. So I'm going to just do sort of an end of the week recap of everything that happened so far. What I'm gonna do today is recap everything from the beginning until now, and I'm filming this on Friday afternoon. I'm gonna try and just get it right out to you guys before it airs again tonight. I mean, this thing, every time you turn around, there's another episode, so I feel like I really need to just jump right in. There are 11 celebrities. To be perfectly honest, I knew seven of them. And I'm not even like super familiar with those seven. But let, let's just go through the list of who is in the house. And this is in no particular order. First, we have Omarosa, the Disney villain of reality TV. She is stunning. The woman's gorgeous from head to toe, and she's pure evil. You may know her from Celebrity Apprentice, and then going on to do something in the White House and then get fired from that. Next, we have Brandy Glanville, and I know my Housewife fans know who that is. Brandy, we miss you on Beverly Hills, but just so you know, Dorit is picking up the slack for Cuckoo Crazy. Next, we have Marissa Jarrett Winokur. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's um, Tracy Turnblad from Hairspray. And you know her from a bunch of other million things she does on TV and in plays and stuff like that. She's cute and adorable. Fourth is Shannon Elizabeth. Shannon is from American Pie. She also did Scary Movie. And I would not have known her just to look at her, but I do know those movies and she looked somewhat familiar to me. So she's one of those celebrities that I'm counting as one that I knew even though I don't really know her that well. Next is Ariadna Gutierrez. She is also one that I'm gonna go, yeah, I kinda know, only because she was Miss Columbia and she is the one that Steve Harvey mistakenly crowned Miss Universe, but he read it wrong or something like that, yeah. So she ends up getting more fame in the long run than the actual Miss Universe because I mean, does anybody remember who that is? I don't. Number six is Keisha Knight Pulliam. That's Rudy from The Cosby Show. We all remember Rudy. She's adorable as well. Seven is Ross Matthews. I think he was like a PA on one of the talk shows, Jay Leno or somebody. And then he kind of went on, did his own thing. He like hosts different things. He's also a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race. So you, even if you don't know him by name, you would know his face because he's on TV all the time. Number eight is Meta World Peace. I guess he's a Laker. I don't know. I. Unfortunately, that has to go into the category of somebody I do not know. My husband says he's really famous, though. Okay. Number nine is Mark McGrath from Sugar Ray. And I don't know. Do we know him from anything else? Number 10 is James Maslow. No idea. He's cute. No idea who he is. He was apparently in a show called Big Time Rush and also the band by the same name. I think he said it was on Nickelodeon or something. I don't know. And finally, we have Chuck Liddell, who I have no idea who this is. He is an MMA guy and I, yeah, 
don't know him either. So those are the 11 D-list celebrities who are in the house. We start off with an HOH challenge, but all the celebrities had to line up on these stars that had numbers. And by random draw, number five, which was Omarosa, didn't have to play. She couldn't be head of household, but she would be safe for that week. So the other 10 played and it was um, an endurance competition. They had to hold on to this giant statue that sort of looked like an Oscar, I guess. So they're holding on to it and then things are being thrown at them like gooey liquid and stuff and the whole thing was getting slippery. The last two people hanging on were James and Shannon and Shannon ends up winning this one. Now I should say prior to that because there were five guys and six girls in the house the girls immediately talked about an all-girl alliance which is so funny if you're a big brother fan you know that that gender alliance is one of the very first things that happens in that house and it never never stays it doesn't work it just doesn't guys try to have an all-guy alliance girls try to have an all-girl and then with all the infighting they switch teams, they switch it up. Whoever feels like they're on the bottom of an alliance immediately looks for other options. So it can't work, but that doesn't stop the women from trying. I think it was Omarosa's idea at first and she's trying to get all the women on board and oh yeah, for sure. First one out is gonna be a guy. So when Shannon won the head of household, all the other women were kind of secretly and maybe not so secretly excited about it. The first little wrench in the plan is that when they walk into the house then after the competition, there are 11 swag bags sitting on a table. Each one of the celebrities is asked to pick a bag randomly, but they can't open it yet. Then Julie tells them that inside the bag is either going to be swag or it's going to be a card that says recast. Okay, so what happens is if you choose to open your bag, you do it at the nomination ceremony before the HOH has announced her two nominees. And you open it, if it says swag, you just go sit down. If it says recast, you immediately become the head of household and on the spot, you pick two people to go up for eviction. Oh, I should also say that the women got Ross Matthews on their team as well. I don't know, but Ross is on with the women's team. So there's a specific time that Big Brother tells you you can go into the diary room and announce whether you wanna open your bag or not. If more than one person at the same time wants to open their bag, then it's a random draw whoever gets the opportunity to do it. So the women all decide that, you know, they don't need to open a bag because they're happy with Shannon as HOH. But if one of the guys does it, they're going to also, all of them get in line to do it too so that the odds are in their favor. So the time comes and Chuck decides he's gonna open his bag because he just thinks he needs to try anything to stay in the house. I think the guys realize they're outnumbered and anyway. So he goes into the diary room to do that and then all the girls line up after him and Ross. So now it's nomination time and Shannon's got her nominees, and by random draw, it's Keisha who gets the opportunity to open her bag. She opens her bag, it does say recast, so she immediately becomes head of household, and she puts up James and Chuck. With James being the actual target, because he's good, he almost won the first HOH, and he's smart and he's good at challenges, so he's a threat. Also, I should say that that first day, James was so obnoxious. I thought, oh God, I can't stand this guy. He was talking about music and how good he is and I don't know, it was weird and it was icky. But I will say this, now that eight episodes later, he's kind of funny. <laughs> he is, he's actually funny. He's a, he's a really good player, so he is a threat. I'm not sure how much I like him. I don't like love him, let's put it that way. 
I think he's kind of trying too hard, but he is sort of funny and he's definitely better than he was. He made a really bad first impression on the first night. Okay, so we have the first veto competition and it's the one where you have to like crawl through mud and pick out letters and spell the longest word that you can. They do this on Big Brother all the time. Shannon won because the others had like four letter word. Ariadna didn't even spell a word. Then there was like a six letter word and maybe a seven letter word. Anyway, Shannon spelled a 16 letter word. Oh my God, Shannon. Girl, you gotta bring it down a notch. You won the HOH. You blew everybody else away with this. Do you not think you're putting a target on your back? You didn't even have to win this one. But the fact that you did it and you just annihilated everybody else with a 16 letter word, you're supposed to be a Big Brother super fan. I do not understand why you didn't think that might not be the best play. Anyway, Keisha is now the head of household and they're strategizing after Shannon wins the veto about if she should use the veto or not. Well, she's thinking, of course I shouldn't because James is our target to get out. But because Mark McGrath said that if he won, he was gonna take James off and he's like kind of James's bro, Keisha wanted to just put the fear of God in him and put him up alongside James. Now that to me was a little bit of Keisha being slightly drunk with power. I don't think it needed to be done. It was overplaying the game. So privately, Ross tells Shannon, you really shouldn't do that because you would be putting a target on your own back when you don't need to. That's silly. You're gonna make an enemy when you don't have to. We wanna get James out. He's still on the block leave it as it is. Just to put a little fear in Mark isn't worth getting another enemy. So Shannon starts thinking about it and she's like, yeah, you're right. Then during one of their talks, Shannon now starts thinking that Omarosa and Keisha are kind of bullying her. And she said, you know what? I would love to just flip this whole thing. And we all get Chuck out. We could work with James, we could, you know, promise him safety. Then, then if he wins, he'll keep us safe. And Ross is like, yeah, you, we should do that. Because they are thinking that Omarosa and Keisha believe they're running the show here. So we have the veto ceremony and Shannon chooses not to use the veto. And you could tell that like Keisha and Omarosa were not happy that she didn't use the veto. So now it's eviction night and Keisha can't vote because she's head of household. So everybody except Omarosa vote out Chuck. And Chuck is the first to go. I barely knew you, Chuck. I didn't know you at all, really. But now Omarosa and Keisha know that the house is kind of against them. So now we have the HOH and it's that drunken bowling thing. It's where you have to hold onto a bar, spin around 12 times, and then grab bowling balls and try to hit um, as many pins as you can. They've done that one on Big Brother before too. And Shannon is coaching everybody to, you know, when it's your turn, pick Omarosa. Everybody pick Omarosa to challenge because we need to get her out for sure. And Keisha can't play because she was the outgoing head of household. So Omarosa catches wind of that, and it is just war between Shannon and Omarosa. They are like two alpha females, and it's on. The first up is Omarosa, and she gets to pick her challenger. So she picks Marissa, thinking Marissa is gonna get dizzy and fall or something, I don't know. But Marissa said, hey, I've been on Broadway. You think I don't know how to do turns, and I've danced and been in dance numbers and stuff? So uh, sure enough, she kicks Omarosa's butt. She does well, she gets hers down and Omarosa's out. The rest almost doesn't even matter because everybody kind of wants Omarosa and Keisha out, but the everybody else is playing Omarosa clutching her chest and uh, goes b back into the house and she's knocking on the door. I need a medic, I need a medic. 
apparently she had uh, an asthma attack. This is no reflection on anybody out there who has asthma or the severity of that. I, I'm not joking about that whatsoever, but I don't trust anything that comes out of Omarosa's mouth. So I don't know what this is. I'm convinced she's not going to come back because it, it things aren't going her way and I think she quits. Now we're down to just a few for whoever wins head of household and Shannon has convinced James to throw it to Ross because that'll show everybody that you're a team player and you're really on our side. So he does, he throws it to Ross. And now Ross is head of household. Now, Ross wants to make a big move. He is in a four person alliance with Shannon, James, and Marissa. But he's also making other deals and he and Marissa also kind of know that James and Shannon are super strong and the two of them were kind of joking about how those two should be the ones to go up next. But he sticks with the plan to put Omarosa and Keisha up on the block. But then I think it's Ari and Brandy who approach Ross and say we really should get Shannon out. And that's something he's already been thinking about. So the plan now is whoever wins veto will take Keisha down and put Shannon up against Omarosa. So everybody's pretty much on board with that. The veto competition is won by Marissa. And this is also happening live because it's, a, it's eviction night. So she's, they're scrambling around because she is, I think, all ready to take Keisha off the block and put Shannon up. But now we see this like conversation happening with Keisha and she's, crying and she's saying please this is not just a game this is my life and and I'm like what the heck you don't really know what's going on unless you watch the feeds which I don't because believe me this is enough it's on every night as it is I don't know how I would have more time in my life to watch the feeds so I don't know exactly what's going on and like I said this is live so they get come into the house and Julie Chen is saying, okay, so each of you have a few minutes to plead your case why you should stay in the house. So Keisha stands up. She is begging people to send her home. Please, if there's any compassion in your heart, you will send me home because she is still breastfeeding her baby and her milk is drying up. And oh my gosh, I was, I was like heartbroken for her. Although I was thinking, why are you in the house when you have a tiny baby? But that's screwing up everybody's plan because they wanted Shannon out. And then Omarosa steps up and says, you know, please do the right thing for her. <laughs> okay, that keeps you in the house too, Omarosa. I mean, that's not lost on anybody. And in the end, everybody votes Keisha out. I do just have to keep coming back to the same thing. If that is all your child will eat, and I think Brandy even said this, I question why you came into the Big Brother house then. If you really wanted to win this thing, you knew you were gonna be in there for a few weeks. I don't know why, I guess she just thought she could pump, but I don't know. Anyway, Keisha's gone. So now there's another head of household competition and everybody really wants to make sure that Shannon does not win this one. Ross can't play because he's the outgoing head of household, but everybody else is playing. And this is a mini golf kind of a thing. So the majority of the house just wants to make sure that Shannon doesn't win or that James doesn't win because they do think those two are in cahoots and they're also the most powerful players. And I think they also don't want Meta to win, but that's more because Meta doesn't really know what's going on and that kind of makes him a wild card. For example, Meta voted Chuck out the week before, but he thought he was voting to have Chuck stay. Yeah, Meta didn't understand the rules. There are, let me just say this, 
these celebrities, about half of them are super fans of Big Brother and they're playing hard. And I'm, I'm really kind of proud of how these celebrities are playing and strategizing and, you know, they're, they're really into it. The other half, not so much. I feel like half of the house, uh, their agent got them this gig and they don't know what Big Brother is or why they're there and... Like Meta, for example, Meta just wants to go home and be with his family. But every time he asks to go home, nobody will let him, <laughs> nobody will vote him out. And now he's getting angry because he sees that they had compassion for Keisha <laughs> and not him. So he's kind of angry that they're keeping him in the house. But I mean, it's just so funny. I don't think this guy has ever seen the show before. So it's kind of funny because like I said, half of the house, they don't really know what they're doing. So they're a little bit afraid to have Meta win and have him make some weird decision. That's all. Anyway, it was a nail biter because by like a tenth of a second, Ari wins the head of household. So everybody is really super excited, although a little too excited, especially when it was Shannon's turn and she didn't beat the time of Ari. Everyone was like jumping up for joy and screaming like Brandy and Marissa and I mean, come on guys, at least play along like you're still on Shannon's team. I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. Some of these people are actors too. I just think they should do a better job. Shannon started to get a little niggling feeling of paranoia as well she should, but I mean, that was her first little feeling that something wasn't quite right. So anyway, Ariadna is the head of household and she and Brandy, she and Brandy are close. It's kind of cute. She's almost like Brandy's little puppy. They follow each other everywhere. They, they both wear their little under eye pads and braid each other's hair and it's sort of cute. But anyway, so she's in the head of household room and you know, Brandy and Ross and Marissa are in there and they're all strategizing. And now Omarosa knows that Shannon is the target. They let her in on that. They're deciding who to put up. So everyone was thinking that at first they should put up Omarosa and Meta as decoys and backdoor Shannon. Then I guess maybe, the, I don't know, somebody started to say how that was a little dangerous because they were thinking, what if James or somebody wins the veto and he just keeps the nominations the same because he doesn't, he's not in on their plan to get Shannon out. So Ari decides that she really just wants to straight up put Shannon and James on the block. And if, if Shannon wins, James will go home. If James wins, Shannon will go home. That way they're sure to get out at least one of those good players, although Shannon is the target. So with all the time leading up to the nomination ceremony, Ari is in the head of household room and everyone is surrounding her and they're making sure that either Meta or Omarosa are in the room so that Shannon can't talk strategy with her. They're trying to keep Shannon away from Ari so that she doesn't like talk her out of it or get the sense that something is amiss. So they're just surrounding her with this layer of protection so that Shannon cannot get to her before the nomination ceremony. And Shannon actually goes up there at one point, but Meta's in the room so she can't talk and she ends up just leaving, but she's really now, this is the second time that she's feeling a little paranoid and it's getting stronger and she's pretty sure something fishy's going on. She's a smart woman and she's sensing what's happening. Nobody's really talking to her, so she kind of knows what's going on. So she's freaking out a little bit. She's not happy. We now have the nomination ceremony and Shannon looks miserable. And Ari turns the keys and it's James and Shannon. And Shannon does not take it well. James, here's what I'm talking about with James. He just makes a joke about how, oh, you know, that's really not a bad picture of me. And he's sort of handling it really well, or at least the way he probably should be handling it. Shannon, Shannon has gone into deep despair. Oh my God. These celebrities are so fragile. They don't like a moment of discomfort. And as soon as anything is amiss, they want to go home. 
They just want to go home. Meta wants to go home. Keisha wanted to go home. Now Shannon wants to go home. I mean, when things don't go well, oh, I forgot to say this. Omarosa came back. <laughs> After she went, she left and went to the hospital, allegedly she had an asthma attack, but she came back in the house to her credit. I meant to say that a long time ago. She came back in the house and she, that's when she and Keisha were nominated. I meant to say that. Okay, so that's where we're at right now. I'm filming this on Friday. I'm going to try to get this out to you guys like this afternoon, but just know, so I have not seen Friday night's episode yet, so I'm just going to try and catch up with you guys again, maybe next Friday, unless there's something I just absolutely have to talk about. But it is fast paced. It is a whirlwind of stuff happening. This is like Big Brother on steroids because everything is happening so fast. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of downtime. For that reason, it's actually kind of exciting. And because, like I said, a lot of these celebrities really are students of the game and they've got their strategies, they've got their plans. Ari surprised me this week with uh, having a good game plan and, and getting in there with it all, you know? So we'll see. All right. Who are you guys hoping wins? Who do you hope goes home? To? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Jill Informed. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.